Well, if you're discussing ties between India and Great Britain, who better to talk to than the Indian High Commissioner to the UK, His Excellency Vikram Durai Swami. Thank you so much, sir, for talking to us and joining us. I have to say, this particular location has actually become a symbol of pride for Indians. That flag, that's where they came and they attacked. And then you put that, that giant flag up there. Um, it must have been a rather traumatic couple of days, or what happened? Well, yes, uh, uh, we certainly have had better days. Uh, certainly seen uh, less stressful days than that. This was on a Sunday. Uh, as it happened, we were coming into the office anyway, my colleagues and I, and I got a frantic phone call yeah. saying, don't come in immediately, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a crisis happening immediately. And I suppose our security guys were worried that yeah. Um, you know, it shouldn't get worse with the attack upon the High Commissioner's car or, or yeah. on me personally. But what happened that day was that there was a group of about uh, 25 or 30 people who came. Mm. And uh, obviously they had, it had been pre-planned. They had cameras and so on and so forth. And uh, they scaled the balcony and were in the process of lowering the flag and trying to hand it over to their, to their crew to desecrate it and yeah. to put up a Khalistani flag. And our security guys climbed into the balcony. And one yeah, of them, he actually came out and grabbed it back, which is yes. a brave guy. I, I, I'd love to meet he, him and shake his hand at some point. Well, you can only shake one hand because they managed to break his other arm in three places. Did with, they? Yeah, with lattes, uh, which they were using from here. Uh, so, you know, when they said minor injuries, it was, I mean, in the larger scheme of things, but he did have uh, three fractures on his uh, on his arm. Okay. Uh, so, so then and, he said and, that, and where did you get that from? I mean, I can't believe you actually had... Did you have an Indian flag that size just yes, we'd lying around and waiting we'd for we actually got one uh, a couple of months ago, um, basically to, uh, to enhance the fact that in such cases, yeah. you know, we would, we would emphasize the fact that the Indian flag is why we are here. And we, are, we have no desire to allow people to uh, sort of push us into a position where we can't even fly the flag. I mean, yeah. what else is a diplomatic mission for if it doesn't fly the flag? Yeah. So this flag we then put up that afternoon itself yeah. to essentially make the point where you can try and desecrate our flag, but the flag is bigger than all of us. No, absolutely. And I, I'm sure you're going to continue to press them for more security because I'm noticing this bus stop right here in front of the High Commission. Yes. and. Um, maybe more security is required. But just understanding the nature of the relationship right now. I mean, obviously, Britain is no longer the biggest partner that India has, but still an important partner because of, of that history. And partly, I think, also because of the diaspora here, something which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. Uh, how do you see the overall relationship, other than irritants like security here? The real substance of our work increasingly is all about uh, our partnerships in an increasingly uh, complex geopolitical, uh, geopolitical world. Right. Uh, the UK and India as large democracies have a lot to contribute. The UK now has a position on the Indo-Pacific, which is of course of critical importance to us. It's the region that is most central to our uh, geo-economic well-being. Uh, the UK is a major trade partner. Our trade is, as per their estimates alone, about 32, 33 billion uh, pounds, mm. so about 35 billion dollars. Um, there is a strong uh, services portion, there's a strong goods portion to the trade, uh, and of course there's a trade agreement being negotiated. Yeah, it's a little bit of a reverse empire happening, <laughs> right? The empire striking back. Yes. You do have a prime minister of Indian origin, and of course a lot of British companies being taken over. So, so that's certainly happening. Look, when it comes to partnership, um, Britain and India, Britain has been a, a bit of a malign force in India, if you, if, you, if you like, during the years of the Raj. But even immediately after that, not always being very sympathetic in areas like Kashmir and others. Mm. Overall though, would you say they are partners, they are allies, they are friends or somewhere in between? No, no, I'd say that look, there is great goodwill today in the UK for, for India. Uh, we see it in the government, uh, the current uh, ruling party, the Tories, but also in the main opposition party, the, the, uh, the Labour Party. There is interest in a relationship that is mutually beneficial. Mm. And I think there is a recognition of the fact that a rising India as a democracy, as a, as a country with strong um, uh, sort of commitment to values, to, 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 to the rule of law, um, the rise of India is in and of itself uh, to the benefit of the UK. And anchoring a relationship, uh, anchoring global Britain as is their new strategy since Brexit in uh, a rising India mm. is obviously going to be of value to them.
If you are to look, for example, just about the British press is constantly saying about India, two strands very clearly seem to be coming across. I think there's a lot of recognition of the economic opportunities there are, the fact that India has overtaken the UK, the fact that India could well be growing at 6-7% for decades, becoming one of the largest economies in the world, infrastructure, rollout, digital, that's a plus side. On the negative side, you hear a lot in the British press about democratic backsliding and yeah. freedom of press and issues like that. Would that be a fair way of summarizing opinion out here? Absolutely. Partly, I think it's, uh, well, there are two, two problems in that, right? One is that, unlike previous generations of Britons, up to the 1950s, I'd say, who had detailed knowledge about India, in fact, of the entire subcontinent, that has gone. So today, there is basically superficial knowledge about India. And people in India find that hard to believe, but it is actually true. You know, this country, for the last several decades, has really had very little uh, detailed attention to India. And so that leads them to look at sort of um, episodes and events as representative of the larger complexity of India. And that's a problem, of course. And so that's a problem, of course, for them. But it's also a problem for us. To some extent, British have always been accused of dividing and conquering. And they introduced a lot of the division into Indian society. Some of those divisions now seem to be coming back, at least in my time out here, when I'm looking at what's happening with the diaspora. Some of the issues seem to be divisions and issues from India now coming here. Khalistan, for example, bullying of kids, clashes taking place between different aspects of South Asian communities out here. Is that becoming a headache for you or not yet? Um, well, some of it is, of course, because um, you mentioned, for instance, the so-called Khalistan thing. Frankly, people need to recognize that there is no such thing in India. Um, the Sikh community is one of the most, you know, it's a, con a community that contributes to the largest extent in our civil society, in our armed forces, in our government. Uh, you know, it is, it is a disproportionately well-represented community because of its, because of the values that they, that they possess, because of the commitment to hard work, and because of their strong uh, sense of nationalism. Yeah. So it's kind of ridiculous that people out here, a small minority, a really small minority of the uh, British Sikh community, have sort of been stuck on the narrative since the 80s, in the bad days of the 80s, when bad stuff did happen, uh, to, to sort of, you know, continue to play this card, which has now become a more, more of a political and, and a... And as, I will, and as I will tell the show, the viewers a little later, that does sometimes result in direct threats to those who are saying we don't agree with all of this. Yes. They threaten them. and they That's completely and they re reprehensible. Them. By the way, they were also trying to do that to my, uh, my team and I, uh, you know, on their websites and stuff like that. Yeah. This is completely unacceptable. You cannot, even if you disagree, you cannot be actually individually targeting people, uh, or uh, uh, you know, if you, if you disagree with them. What, what, sort, of, what sort of values are those? Right. Okay, uh, Mr. High Commissioner, before, before we let you go and get back to work, uh, uh, work, any final thoughts you have for us? Like, you know, wh where do you see this relationship going forward? Is it going to become a major strategic partnership for us uh, going forward? Will it not be? How do you see this? What do you, where do you see the future? Well, look, I think we are interested in a substantive, wide-ranging and deeper relationship with the UK. The intention is to try and ensure that our relationship steps forward in a variety of areas, including uh, in particular trade and investment, but also technology, right. research, innovation, areas of mutual strength like that. And of course our diaspora, you know, 1.8 million people of Indian origin. This is a community that's successful, prosperous, entrepreneurial. This is a community that has actually earned a very good name here. So last word for you then on where the, few, where the future is actually headed to. Do you think it's more economic going forward, especially when the FTA comes? Will it be more strategic and defense related when it comes to the Indo-Pacific? Will it be questions around the diaspora? Well, it will be a mix of all three, right? I mean, in a sense, uh, no relationship can be uh, built on just one pillar. The economic and commercial and investment pillar, of course, is a critical part because, uh, frankly, nations uh, stay partners as long as they're getting wealthy together. Yeah. Um, the strategic part is an important piece of the glue because um, in a more complex world, countries with similar values will need to work more closely with each other. And of course, our defense and uh, uh, sort of technology-based partnerships will only grow as a result of that. But the community is the thing that 
could actually add real value to it. Um, today, particularly when you know people of Indian origin here, 1.8 million, as I said, are looking to find ways in which they can contribute more productively to a strengthened relationship that benefits both countries. I think that would be a really critical part of the piece. All right. Vikram Dharai Swami, High Commissioner to the UK, quite literally keeping the flag flying in a rather, rather large flag flying. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.